this is Ropal and today in Turbo Talks we're talking to Theo Kagan Hart of Ineos Grenadiers about the Tour de France. All right, all welcome back to the Turbo Talks podcast. It is time for episode number 50. And what better event is there to talk about than the Tour de France? We are recording this on Thursday afternoon, just before the team presentations and just less than two days before the Grand Départ in Brittany. And I'm actually thrilled to be joined by the man who is going to make his Tour de France debut and who has actually won the previous Grand Tour that he has ridden. Uh, you guessed it, it is Theo Gegenhardt of Indias Grenadiers. Welcome, Theo. Thanks for joining the Turbo Talks. How are you going? Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, all good. Um, sorry if there's any background noise. We're here on the bus, not the, the best rec- recording studio in the world. But uh, yeah, this is life on the road, to be honest. So um, it'll have to do for now. But yeah, all good. Thanks. We've got a busy day today and then uh, a bit more low key tomorrow before the, the race kicks off on Saturday. Yeah, or you, at least you're in a comfy chair now. Uh, are the nerves already uh, kicking in? No, not really, to be honest. I think, um, yeah, with the Grand Tour, you travel, obviously, Tuesday or Wednesday before the race. So you have you have quite a lot of time kind of building up to the race. And I think from my five Grand Tours in the past, I definitely learned that, yeah, you almost need to be the opposite, really, just nice and relaxed and not having any tension in those days otherwise it's a it's a long way from uh, from arriving at the race that you even you know cross the the start line as it were for stage one so um yeah we had a little peek of uh, the finish of stage one today actually it's, it's definitely going to be a um, tricky final and exciting one i think and yeah i mean for sure going to be a little bit of, of chaos as well there i would say so um yeah, I think that definitely gets you in the race mood when you see the the finish line and, you know, they're building the gantry and uh, you see those final few corners. You start to imagine a little bit how it's going to be on, on race day. But yeah, we still have, still have quite some time and uh, quite a few things to do between now and then, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Early thoughts for stage one uh, for the sprinters or already for the GC favourites? Um, I mean, it's definitely pretty hard. Uh, I wouldn't say it's uh, a sprint. Uh, I mean, I think it will be a pretty sizable group still. Probably, I would say more depending on the entrance to the climb. It, it, there's a few corners there, so it'll be really lined out. Um, someone will always take it on on, on the first kilometre of that that last 3K kind of climb, and, and that's the hardest kilometre. So... Yeah, it's going to be pretty selective, but I think you could probably still expect to see uh, 30, 40, 50 riders. Um, so it'll be, in my opinion, a sprint, but uh, yeah, a bit more selective and, and probably not like the classic bunch sprint guys. Yeah, and you already mentioned that taking the race on, and I think that is exactly what you guys are sort of like set out to do here in France, um, coming out with a, with a team of hitters, obviously. Um, yourself included. Uh, what's going to be your role in this team and how do you look forward to this race? Yeah, I mean, I think like any Grand Tour, it's definitely a case of of kind of taking the boxes off, as boring as that is, and, and taking it day by day. Um, there's certainly, yeah, this first two days to get through and then you have another kind of couple transition stages which could easily spring some surprises and then obviously the TT. And I would say that's kind of the first... Uh, phase of the race really if you will and and then after the tt of course you still haven't even done any any mountains yet but definitely there'll be um you know a lot more information on the table by by that point um i think you know for us we have like you say great momentum coming into the race with uh three massive victories for the team in in the past six weeks um and yeah personally was was amazing to watch what Jagan and the boys what they did over, over in Italy um it was a really nice way for us to kind of enter Dauphiné uh literally on the on the back of that and then the squad in in Swiss did exactly the same uh basically as as Richie crossed the the finish line in um Les Gets, I think it was uh in yellow so yeah we've we've had a great couple of weeks and that's uh, the focus to to continue in that way and carry the momentum and, and good energy that we have really and I'm excited to be a part of that to be honest. 
And, and did you guys already talk about, like you were there now for a couple of days, did you have chats about the race tactics already as well in terms of like what the philosophy is going to be in terms of the attacking mode that you yeah wanted to be in? Or Yeah, I mean, I think like we just said, really, it's, it's about splitting, you know, I think if I ask you what you're going to be doing in, in 21 days at uh, 9 a.m. in the morning, you also wouldn't know uh, the exact same like us. And you have to to break it down like like anything in life, really, and especially anything that's that's challenging. So, yeah, like I like I said before, really, I think the well, the key, in my opinion, and, and it's something that you hear quite often, unfortunately, the key is really day by day in these races and not looking too far ahead and even focusing on on the start of each race, then on the middle section, and then of course the final that everyone sees on television is a whole other ball game. But you know, you go over that process time and time again, and I think that's what we've become very good at as a team, and and kind of knowing when is the right moment and and when to really switch on. And of course, this is the tour, so inevitably, you know, those moments come earlier and and in more tricky places or at a higher speed, more difficult. But at the same time, it's, you know, bike racing, it's what we do all year. And I think, yeah, we we have a rough idea of, of how we want to approach the race. But equally, I think that, you know, in the next five days, we understand a lot more. And, and in the five days after that, even more, of course. So, yeah, for me, is really just look on what's in front of you. And, and right now I've got, um, just had some media, talking to you now then we've got a riders briefing with the organization then a team presentation then dinner and then i'm going to go to sleep and then it's the day before the tour de france tomorrow so we we start that with uh another media 9 a.m and then we get going uh it's busy here but it's nice uh, you know so at least you know what you'll be doing tomorrow morning at 9 a.m i do yeah in 21 <laughs> days not but um day by day so we'll see how it goes <laughs> Yeah. But do you already have like a rough idea about your own role? Like you might not be leading the team as you did at the end of the Giro, which obviously wasn't probably set out uh, last year in the Giro either to start as a leader, uh, but you ended up being a leader and now you got you guys got more cards to play as well. But what will be initially be your role? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely clear, like certainly um, G and and. Richie have been flying in, in the last month and, and of course, also uh, Australian Richie as well um, with our two Richies. Um, so, yeah, I think definitely in terms of, of this season it's, it's not been my best year so far, to be honest. Um, but the momentum is is also going in the right way. Um, you know, I feel good. I feel healthy. Um, it's been good training and, and Dauphiné was, was in the right direction, uh, all things considered. So, uh, honestly, I'm not the person to get too carried up with things like that. Uh, I think the better approach is just focusing on, you know, being my best self and, and yeah, whatever comes with that, we'll, we'll see. I know. Uh, uh, All right. So, so you briefly dropped out there, but I think the answer came through. Um, just what I wanted to touch on, you already met like the other guys uh, on the team, obviously leaders with a lot of experience. Is there something particular that you learned from from the guys, from each of them, from, from a G and from the both Richies? Yeah, I think it's not just leaders, to be honest, mate. Um, actually, the, the other guys are just as experienced, if not in a few cases more. Um, so, yeah, of course, everyone has, has something different to offer and, um, and equally has the experience of riding together as a group, which is super important um, and maybe more important than the individual expertise and experiences is, is, yeah, this is a team sport in the end. And I think that's the the key. So yeah, probably being part of the group actually as a whole is, is much more important than, um, than the individual, but yeah, definitely we've got a lot of guys here who've been a part of some massive wins and, and a lot of Tour de France wins as well. So uh no better place to be, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I can imagine you already had a peek at the road book as well. Uh, what do you think overall of the course for, for the upcoming three weeks? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a bit more TT kilometers than we've seen in the last years, but, you know, equally, like I said, the first few stages are, are pretty tough already and, and tricky, certainly no no easing into the race. Um, 
And yeah, it was certainly a bit over a week before we have some big, big mountain tests, but um, that's also, you know, fairly typical for the tour. So I don't think it's, you know, there's nothing really that stands out as as particularly shocking, but at the same time, I think the, the key is that you just never know when, when something's going to happen. It can be on the stage that everyone thinks is, you know, a bit mundane or or a transition stage when actually the, the race explodes. And equally, like we saw in Grand Tours last year, when everyone thinks it's over, often it's not, or it comes down to those smallest of fine margins on on the last day or the last couple of days. So, yeah, that's that's the key in, in this sport and, and definitely in this race. Is there a one stage you look forward to in particular? Maybe um, close to Andorra, close to home. Yeah, I mean, I go, yeah, I go right past my my apartment, which is which is pretty cool. Um, home roads and and roads that I know all day with, with a lot of memories. But yeah, I think just for half the peloton these days in Andorra or not. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of riders there. It's you know a great place to train and and obviously at high altitude, which is is massive. And and that's one of the first things that that brought me there really to to living at yeah close to 2000 meters um but yeah i think to be honest there's there's a lot of really nice stages and and a lot of roads that i've done in the past in in under 23 races or in dauphine or in other pro races so yeah it's it's exciting but equally to be honest nothing really stands out that much because like i said before i think you never really look too far ahead in in this game it's you know tomorrow and and the next day at best yeah, yeah. <laughs> well if you don't look too far out i won't ask you for predictions but i know you've done this in the for the giro and you gave away some some fantasy tips to some people if they're playing like in fantasy oh, yeah. leagues so yeah. so who are the riders to watch for this year then oh that's tough i haven't thought about that um i'll have to um i'll have to go away and have a think who comes off the top of my head i think that oi, oi, oi. Uh, i was thinking today about madwas and um Gaudu, they're on home roads in the next yeah. three days or something. And, you know, the, the two finishes are definitely up their street um, for both of them. So I'm I'm sure we'll see one of them do something special, if not both of them. Um, probably once in a lifetime opportunity for them to, to race on home roads. So, yeah, maybe chuck one of them boys in for, for the next four, uh, 72 hours. Why not? Yeah, yeah. See, you certainly have done your homework and studied those roadbooks and all the details. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, we're going to wrap it up. You got to go to a team presentation. Just want to thank you for your time and wish you all the best in the in the upcoming three weeks in France with the team. Thanks very much. Thank you well. Have a nice day. You too. Thank yes. you. And thank you guys all for listening. Don't forget to tell a friend about the podcast, subscribe and leave a rating and review on iTunes. Enjoy the Tour de France. And in the meantime, as always, make sure you never stop cycling. This was Rob Pau with Theo Gegenhardt of Ineos Grenadiers. Stay tuned for the next Turbo Talks.